I mean, look, I don't think Commander Stephanie Stone's particularly enjoying any oh. of this. Oh. They told me wrestling was fake. And then I took a really big fall. And I don't even have the footage of it yet, but look at this. Oh my God, scared. Oh my God. Right, now imagine that going a bit wrong. Ow. It's not actually that bad, but it really hurts. So I'm really milking it. Speaking of milking it, We've got a video about a $10 fatality today. How much of this can you actually hear through my medical grade bandages? Just quickly, if you'd like to do me a solid, please consider voting for Kid Bandit versus Commander Sterling for Queer Wrestling Match of the Year and Commander Sterling for International Queer Wrestler of the Year in the Queer Wrestling Awards. Link in description. Thanks. No! It's 5.52 p.m. on a Sunday evening. As I type this, the script I'd already written had to be thrown out because developments rendered the subject obsolete. 24 hours ago, I was in a wrestling match that involved me taking several tumbles onto concrete, harshly bumping face first onto the unyielding ring apron, and taking a power bomb from the second rope in which I uncharacteristically botched the landing and crunched a significant portion of my neck and head. No concussion, thankfully. That is to say, I am exhausted, slightly out of it, in notable amounts of physical discomfort, and have had to pull an entirely new script out of my premium grade anus on an evening where I really would like to just curl up with a good book and a fistful of codeine. To make matters worse, earlier today, when I thought I had this script in the bag, I finally crossed an ambition off my bucket list and watched the entirety of the original run of Twin Peaks, an accomplishment that has left me in a state of of bewilderment because, well, I just wrapped up watching all of Twin Fucking Peaks. I am not in the right frame of mind for anything. And all of this is happening in November, as the news cycle starts to slow down in anticipation of the holidays, and I'm looking at a bunch of news that's mostly not fucking interesting, or extensive enough to support a whole bloody video. I mean, the Assassin's Creed pop-up ad thing was audacious until Ubisoft ruined it for me by explaining themselves in a way that made just enough sense to not support half of what I was gonna say. The Last of Us Part 2 getting remastered only a few years since its original launch has been criticised and questioned, but there's just not enough there for a detailed breakdown of it, at least not yet. Electronic Arts announced a Sims 4 expansion in which you can be a landlord, setting you up to play as perhaps the most morally bankrupt villain protagonist in video game history. I mean, that's basically all I can say about that. Speaking of EA though, Immortals of Avium's developer has claimed that the aggressively mediocre game's poor sales can 100% be blamed on a busy launch calendar. One. HUNDRED PERCENT! That's a MASSIVE fucking percentage! That's like... Even bigger than 99%! And I'm sure it's because it came out near Baldur's Gate 3. It couldn't be due to the fact it was so fucking unoriginal you could predict the entire plot if you'd watched literally any three fantasy movies made in the past 50 years! No. Ah, fuck it. Let's complain about that $10 fatality in Mortal Kombat 1. A bit of old news by now, I suppose, but I never got around to it, and it's a good chance to talk about fighting games some more, a genre I'm now a complete expert in because I play Street Fighter 6 using modern controls and literally nobody can stop me. But seriously, Warner Brothers is a huge fucking piece of shit, and it's always a good idea, it's never not relevant, to call Warner Brothers out for being a huge fucking piece of shit. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. Mortal Kombat 1 released a few weeks back. Sadly, I didn't play it because, while it did have some nice sounding accessibility options, it didn't offer quite the robust compromise Street Fighter 6 did. Though as someone who's always adored Mortal Kombat's glorious stupidity, I'd jump on it in a heartbeat if I felt I could. 
Unfortunately, no amount of accessibility in the world would grant me the tools necessary to comprehend the sheer fucking audacity of a game charging 10 American pounds for a single fucking character animation, which is, of course, all a fatality really is. Fatalities are iconic, gruesome, hilariously over-the-top finishing sequences, but they are, at their core, a fucking animation at best, mechanically the same thing as one of those obnoxious little Fortnite dances. You press the button, the thing happens. It's beyond the openness of my mind that the remotes and other animations are considered worth paying for as premium content at all. That's not to diss the hard work of animators, but the animation isn't the product. It shouldn't be a product. But thanks to the aforementioned Fortnite and the many games that chased its monetization strategies, we're all supposed to believe that single character animations are indeed worth some money on their own instead of no money and just put them in the fucking game already. And look, this is coming from someone who sort of likes emotes. One of the best things about the excellent game Karma Zoo is that you can unlock little dances for the adorable characters to do. But even though Karma Zoo is one of the most immediately brilliant games I've ever played and an easy shoe-in for a Game of the Year award personally, I wouldn't pay a dime for any single one of the exquisitely charming animations, not when I, you know, bought the fucking game in the first place. Anyway, speaking of Fortnite, Warner Brothers did more than just try to sell an animation. It copied the Smash Hit Battle Royale's entire storefront concept with a rotating shop of limited items. Epic Games popularised several really shitty business models when it launched Fortnite into the world, the Battle Pass being the most ubiquitously chased bandwagon, and the rotating storefront perhaps being the most disgustingly insidious. Even before the $10 finisher situation, Mortal Kombat was coming under fire for having having such a store in the first place, and rightly so. At least Fortnite has the weak excuse of being free to play, Mortal Kombat 1 is a $60 game. What? Wait. Oh no, no. No, we don't say that anymore, do we? No. Sorry, Mortal Kombat 1 is a $70 game, but is stuffed to the brim with microtransactions and a plethora of pathetic ways to carve the experience into piecemeal purchases rather than offer a full premium product for a full premium price. A classic case of fee to pay, as we like to say around here. Another thing we like to say is Warner Brothers is a bunch of fucking shitbags. <laughs> Rotating storefronts are really underhanded and particularly predatory ways of encouraging habitual and or impulsive microtransaction purchases. As we discussed in our classic video, The Addictive Cost of Predatory Video Game Monetization, time limits are a popular method of attempting to panic users into spending money, exerting pressure on them by dangling the threat of missed opportunity. This was boasted about in that despicable talk we analysed in that video, where a game developer proudly explained how the mere inclusion of a goblin with a ticking clock would be enough to cause anxiety in potential buyers and push them towards spending without thinking. Rare cards appear and you see, see the goblin going with his clocks, tick tock. I'll take it away from you, I'll take it away from you. Uh, they, they are scarce, they go away. This is a brilliant way to, to uh, get more, people to, to spend more. It's not acceptable in freemium games let alone $70 ones. Of course, it's a sales technique that's older than video games themselves, the limited time offer, get it while stocks last, call within the hour for a discount, etc. That feeling of urgency, of making you buy now and think later because this could be your last chance, is what rotating storefronts are entirely designed around encouraging. And because Warner Brothers is Warner Brothers and decency is an alien fucking concept, the $70 game has plenty of DLC on top of the microtransactions. As well as that 70 bucks, you can get the Cameo Unlock Pack for $19.99, the Combat Pack for $39.99, the One-Time Dragon Pack for $1.99, Shang Tsung for $7.99, Havoc for $7.99, Omni-Man for $7.99, and Tremor Cameo for $4.99. Naturally, as well as the $70 standard edition, Mortal Kombat 1 offers a premium edition for $109 and a collector's spelled with a K edition for $249. Fuck. So many new and exciting ways to give Warner Brothers money! Aren't you excited? <sighs> Uh, 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 uh.
Despite multiple special editions, a bunch of DLC, and that rotating microtransaction store, good old WB still didn't feel like it had exploited its audience enough, and decided to really push its luck with a Halloween fatality animation that cost 10 fucking dollars. Or rather, 1200 dragon crystals, spelled with a K, which you'd acquire by spending $10 for 1250 dragon crystals, spelled with a K. You see what they did there, right? No, not the K thing. The leaving you with 50 units of Monopoly money that would sit useless in your account until you bought even more to be able to afford something else thing. Ha <laughs> ha! I love video games! They psychologically abuse us! The thing about fatalities is that they aren't interactive even. Calling them animations might be overselling what you, as a player, can get out of them. What I mean by that is they're wholly cinematic in nature. You input buttons to start the show, but then you just sit and watch them play out. I say this because, well, well let me demonstrate what I mean. Zero wins. That'll be ten dollars, please. Thank you. Well, what do you mean you don't want to pay me ten dollars? I literally just gave you a fatality. I just gave that to you. Oh, come on, give us a ten or I'll suck you. So you just got the exact same thing anybody who paid ten dollars to unlock that fatality got. You were able to watch some guy plonk a bug filled pumpkin on another guy's head and then kick it at a door. And you got to watch it for free. Yes, I realise I'm really being browbeaty about this, even by my standards, but I'm not sure one can stress enough exactly how fucking worthless this is. It's ten dollars for a twenty second cutscene. That's exactly what it is. That's all it is. If I wanted to pay to watch a cutscene, I'd buy the Metal Gear Solid remasters. Or I would if I hadn't bought them already. Oh, there's a dozen, dozy dozen, little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? Now if the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit so the backlash to this ridiculous premium fatality was swift and severe. Weirdly, it turned out that people didn't like the idea of paying $10 for a 20 second cutscene in a $70 game with tens of dollars of DLC in a rotating microtransaction store. Weird that! Warner Brothers, ever the wanker, decided to try and soothe tension by addressing the situation in a way that looked like a compromise, but was in essence a little more than doubling down and unsubtly sending the message that giving them more money is always a good idea. We appreciate your feedback on all everything MK1, oozed a statement on the official Twitter account of Mortal Kombat 1, and no, I'm not going to start saying X formally Twitter like everybody else does. That grammatically inaccurate sentence is the closest Netherrealm or Warner have come to directly addressing the criticism, but they did have an indirect non-apology to show for themselves. See, there are two other fatalities coming out that, like the Halloween fatality, are themed around holidays, the Thanksgiving fatality and the Christmas fatality. In response to the criticism of charging a tenner apiece for these things, Mortal Kombat 1 is offering the other two fatalities quote-unquote free to anybody who was already duped into buying the first one. The so-called Seasonal Fatalities Bundle, containing all three 20-second cutscenes, spelled with a C, will officially cost 1200 dragon crystals, spelled with a K. Before the backlash and the official response, it was naturally expected that this bundle would have cost $30, but obviously they can't do that anymore, so I guess... Hooray for the consumer? Instead of spending 30 bucks for a single minute of cutscenes, you only have to spend 10? That's a... a win? TM? I suppose? Really? Can I get higher than this? No. No, of course it's not really a win. While some people have been mollified by the move, others remain angry at the situation, rightfully so, because all Warner Brothers has done here is provide an additional reward to people who were conned into spending their money, reinforcing for them that buying the $10 cutscene was a good idea, actually. While creating the illusion that $10 for three cutscenes is a good deal via that classic psychological technique I like to call envelope pulling. Envelope pulling is when you do something fucking egregious and overstep the mark, then walk it back to something that's still egregious, but retroactively appears more acceptable because it's no longer as bad as it could have been. Basically, you push the envelope, and then you pull it back a bit. 
We see this in video games all the time and I've criticised it a lot, especially when it comes to monetization strategies where a company will do something so heinous that when it stops, people are relieved enough to make concessions for only slightly less heinous shit. The biggest example of course being how loot boxes made so many people more forgiving of regular microtransactions because at least they weren't literal gambling. Hello. Mortal Kombat 1 is absolutely pulling the envelope with its paytalities. Make no mistake, $10 for three 20 second cutscenes with a C is a fucking scam, but the news went some way towards softening the stances of quite a few people. Way fewer people now are questioning why we're paying for fatalities or, in a point I find quite interesting, how exactly Warner Brothers can claim these fatalities are worth paying anything for at all when it can so suddenly and whimsically cut the price of two of them to zero dollars. I mean, that's what they did, didn't they? They were gonna be a tenner each, now you pay a tenner for all three, Two of them were marked down 100%. So they're worthless, right? They're fucking worthless. Whatever happened to that age-old excuse that microtransactions and DLC were important because games weren't making enough money otherwise? Games have to make money somehow! I don't like microtransactions, but they're important for supporting the game. You know, all that shit apologists have constantly yelled at me ever since I started criticising all of this stuff. Apparently, the monetization of Mortal Kombat 1 is so crucial to breaking even, so important to the longevity of the series, so supportive of the game's development, but Warner Brothers can literally give it away and suffer no damage. Gosh. Reminds me of the time Star Wars Battlefront 3 took all the microtransactions out and EA boasted to investors that they'd suffer no material loss. It's almost, almost, as if these companies are charging excessive amounts of cash for shit that has no value whatsoever and that they're already raking in so much fucking money that what they're gouging out of people who already paid them means next to fucking nothing beyond their sheer profiteering greed for it. What a bunch of cunts. With a K. And um, because it's with a K, uh, Z-Man, we don't have to like edit in Skeleton Warriors for that, like, like to censor the word cunt. Skeleton. That one was with a C, so you better just like do a very quick Skeleton Warriors over that, but the next cunt I say is with a K. Cunt. Obviously the cunt I just said before I said the cunt with a K was cunt with a C. Um, and the previous cunt was, uh, that would have been a cunt with a C, hey, Steph, uh, following Steph, another cunt Steph, with a K. Steph, you know the invoices every time they show up? Unless your vehicle has a cow catcher on the front of it, or you have something in your insurance that still pays out in the event of disembodied goat genitalia, I'm going to suggest you avoid the i7 for at least the rest of the afternoon. Well, that's been the Drive Time Report. Let's get back to our non-stop rock block, ad-free, thanks to a sponsorship from Creedle and Crab Nuts. Our first song is a dedication going out to Stephanie Sterling from the gang over at Jimquisition, who'd like to wish you a speedy recovery from a number of injuries sustained during a professional wrestling match. Now... Huh, I thought their stuff was fake. Anyway, this is Eclectic Shite Orchestration with their latest hit. You're listening to 96.9 KOCK's Drive Time, only on 97 Rooster. Shang Tsung's $8 fee, 10 buck fatalities. Can't stop paying for this Mortal Kombat game. They want me to piss all of my cash away with a K. Those pigs at the WB monetizing desperately. Nickel and diamond, all that cutscene ultraviolence getting screwed. A Warner Brothers crap today with a K. It would be nice to pay one price and beat a blue king with kids How is that so hard? These corpo guys must monetize They've had their hands and eyes for so long What a bunch of dogs
And there you have it. Oh wait, shit, sorry, there we are. Ow! And there you have it. Another rip-roaring episode of the Jimquisition. Maybe not the most rip-roaring we've ever done, but you know what? At the last minute, while bloody injured, I think we did a decent fucking job. Okay. So thank God for me. Ow.